Hi everybody, good morning. I'm coming to you a lot earlier today. So I hope that you guys are able to jump in and watch. Maybe you've got your coffee or maybe you're taking a break at work. Um, today for Facebook Friday, I'm gonna focus on this cute little bundle called um, Picnic With You. We're gonna make three projects and it's break. And my kids are home. They're actually all still asleep, so I'm trying to be quiet. I have very late sleepers. And I'm not sure we're even live. Is there anybody watching out there? Oh, now I see it popping up. Oh, well, it looks like maybe we are live after all. All right, good. So, I, it looks a little grainy to me, so just be patient. Um stick with me it seems like it clears up after a while and if not the recording is always clear because I save it and then I upload it and it's better all right good morning Lisa and Lisa hello ladies thanks for joining me early this morning it looks very unfocused on my screen hopefully that will fix itself soon because that's going to make it difficult what do you ladies think? Does it look pretty, pretty blurry? Oh, it looks like maybe, who knows? Well, anyways, let me get started. Um, let me move these out of the way for just a minute. The big, the big news. Good morning, Shelly. The big news in Gina, hi, in the Stamping Up world this week are the new celebration items. To finish the last two weeks of celebration, Stamping Up has released a scattering of um, options. Uh, they're all from the annual catalog. Well, I say all of them. Most of them are from the annual catalog. A few are from the occasions catalog and they're all free with either a $50 purchase or a $100 purchase. This one's a really, oh, there's actually two there. Look, I thought that was one. There's actually two. Hmm. Hello. I just discovered that. So we're actually using this one today on a project and I didn't even realize it. Um, <laughs> there's just so many good things. It's hard to see them all. Hi, everybody. Good. It's getting better, Darcy. Yeah, it's getting better on mine, too. Isn't that weird? It's like it has to warm up or something. Anyway, so this is the news. The last, uh, I guess we only have about two weeks left of celebration, uh, two and a half weeks, maybe. And so these are, for those of you like me who have all the celebration items and want more things, now we have more things to choose from. And so I plan some projects today that kind of include a couple of these things so you can see them in action. Um, if you've never joined me on Facebook Live before, I always schedule a post over my blog that goes live at the same time and I have these project sheets and the project sheets have all the items I've used as well as any of the measurements that you're going to need for those projects. Um, and then on the back are all the little announcements and things that I that I tell you. Links to my classes, um, the All Star Bundle, link to purchase a starter kit if you're interested in that. Um, so make sure you hop over to pinkbuckaroo.com and save or print or download or whatever you're going to do with those. Um, the All Star Tutorial Bundle looks like this. If you have not heard of it before, I am a part of a wonderful team, all these ladies. We come together every month with new tutorials. We each design one and we put them together and you can get them for free with a $50 purchase from my online store from Stamping Up or you can um, buy it for $15. Maybe you're a demonstrator um, already and you just want the PDF, but you can see it's a big deal. So check that out. There's a link to that on the project sheet. Uh, let's see, I also have this class. This is my next class. The, the deadline is Tuesday, so just a few more days. And um, it is the, I'm calling it the Woodland Friends. It includes the Hedge Hugs and the We Must Celebrate stamp set. Two really cute stamp sets. And if you buy option one, you get a celebration item of your choice. And there are five projects, two 3D. And actually, there are six projects. It's been a while since I made it, I forgot. Four really fancy, cute cards and two 3D items. You also get some of these really, really cute buttons. I think they're called True Gentleman Buttons. I love wooden buttons. So check that out. There's four options. Option one includes the stamp set. Option two does not include the stamp set. Option three is 
the PDF only. And option four is for my team. They get the make and takes at cost, basically, from me um, because they can order the products under their own number. So check that out. It's right here on the project sheet. There's a link here for you. There's also a link on my blog. All right, let's do some prizes, you guys. Let's do some prizes. Last week, I was giving away two stamp sets. So Darcy and Julie, you are the winners this week. I think I have both of your, your mailing addresses. But you know what? Just shoot me a message with your mailing address so I don't have to hunt and search for it. Please, ladies. Um or I'll email you for it. Either way, I'll send these out to you next week. Congratulations, ladies. And I also said I would give away two embellishment kits to people who shared this video. I always pick a couple of winners from people who share. So if you will, hi, there's Darcy. Good. Okay, Darcy. So um, just shoot me an email real quick with your uh, mailing address, please. So if you'll share my video, I'll pick several winners next week. Last week's winners are getting the, this cute, sweet soiree embellishment kit. So Cheryl and Patrice, I don't have either of your mailing addresses. So please message or email me. No, Gina, I, I'm seeing your message. <laughs> Patrice and Cheryl, um, email me your addresses. Gina, I have done so good. And my parents were here and we ate out. Uh, we ate out every single day, and it was very difficult, but I have done very good. No sugar, and I don't even feel the cravings for sugar anymore. You you all should be very proud of me because that's very difficult for me. <laughs> it's funny that you asked that. Okay, this week's prize is a big one, the Apron of Love Bundle. We did a Facebook Friday on this a few weeks ago, and I wonder if I have, look, oh, I do. You know what? I have the make and takes. From that Facebook Friday so I'm gonna put that in there with a the prize too so go over to my blog enter there's a little raffle copter widget there you have to enter your email address and um, I will give this away next week and look you'll have three make and takes to go with your apron of love bundle it's so cute okay so pinkbuckaroo.com for that and then um, share the video I'll give away four ribbon shares this week for people who share the video. So please share the video on Facebook. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll pick four winners for these ribbons next week. Now, if you haven't joined me, or maybe you have and you just have forgotten, I always offer the make and takes for free. This is last week's make and take kit with a little Easter treats. Um, if you put in an order by Monday night using this hostess code, I'm gonna send you all three of today's make and takes for free in the mail next week. And it comes like this, has um, a link to the video and all three of the little make and takes in there for you. And I usually ship them out um, the following Wednesday. I pack them, cut them and pack them on Tuesday. Sometimes I can get them out on Tuesday, but usually on Wednesday. Thanks so much, you guys, for sharing the video. I really do appreciate that. All right, so that's it. Let's get started. Uh, my dogs are rustling around in and out of here. Hopefully they'll stay out for most of the time. And would you believe it or not, I am expecting APS to stop by this morning as well. They usually come in the afternoon, but I um, am expecting them this morning. I don't know, you guys. It's always crazy town around here. All right, so we are doing Picnic With You bundle. Have you guys seen this cute, adorable bundle in the catalog? It's towards the front. And it has a lot of stamp sets and a lot of framelits. And I've had lots of requests to make some projects with this. So I pulled it out this week and had so much fun playing with it. Um, it kind of reminds me of Barbie. I don't know if any of you, when you were little girls, played with Barbie and all the little food and the little cups and saucers. That's just kind of what I kept thinking about when I was making these projects. It's very cute and it's fun. So if you're... Um, if you like cute and um, if you like lots of framelits, I know I love to make little scenes. This is um, a great set to get for that. All right, so we're going to start with the picnic card. Of course, we're gonna make a picnic basket, a traditional picnic basket. So we're gonna do lots of stamping, we're gonna need lots of ink, and I'm gonna to try to get it all to fit onto one, one piece of white cardstock. So, 
the stamps, one thing that you'll notice is that there's lots of stamps. And one thing I did with my clear sheet is I put two strips of sticky strip on the back of that clear sheet and stuck it into my case. That way it doesn't rattle around. And that way I can keep track of my stamps really well in there. Um, so that's just kind of a little tip. Two strips of sticky strip back there and it'll hold that clear, that little clear, um, clear sheet. All right, so let me get some of the blocks out over here. And we're gonna stamp first the basket in soft suede. Now, if you do all your stamping ahead of time, all together at the same time is what I'm trying to say, you can really kind of hopefully run it through the big shot and get a lot of it cut at one time. Now, because there's so many little stamps, I decided to um, clean and take them all off as I went. And I'm using our Stampin' Spritz. If you guys used this, you spray one side with a wet and then you dry it on the other side. It's great, it's a great tool to have. All right, so then we have these little handles, the little basket handles. Actually, there's one stamp and then there's two framelits. So let's stamp these twice. And one thing, one mistake that I made the first time is that I was stamping them all too close together. So then the framelits were not fitting. So as you stamp, try to leave quite a bit of space around them. Now I doubt I'll get them all in together. I had to do about three swoops through the big shot. It's kind of a game, do you guys do that? Let's see how quickly, how, how little, how few times I can run through the big shot. All right, so this is like a little bowl of cherries, I think. And I did it in Daffodil Delight. And now I'm gonna do, let's see if I can get on top of that so I can line that up. And then I'm doing the cherries in red. And then I'm gonna take just a black marker or brown and just draw, there's a little tiny space there for the stems. It's really cute. Okay, now let's do the cheese. Now the cheese, let's bring that, I should have done that so I didn't have to get those back out, but that's okay. Now the cheese I'm actually gonna stamp once and then I'm gonna stamp twice because I only really want the lighter cheese. And I'm stamping it over here because I don't have any scrap paper right here. <laughs> so just stamp the solid cheese over on your scrap paper and then stamp it again so that you have it light on your white paper. And then go over it. Well, that was terrible. Let's do that all over again. Let's go backwards. This one is the one that has like the little holes in it. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna run out of white paper. We may have to have some messed up cheese. All right, let's try that again. That's the one that has the holes. This is the one that's solid. I'm just gonna stamp off. And now I'm gonna fill in with a solid one. There we go. See, can you guys see how that looks? So it's light, the light yellow. All right, let's do the little water bottle or wine bottle, whichever you think you wanna include in your wine basket. I'm using Marina Mist. And then we had a muffin. And this first little muffin is just the outline of the muffin. Mmm, crumb cake is what I'm gonna use. It's just coming together so cute, isn't it? It's a little, little scene. So there's the outline. And each time I'm just placing them back on here, that, that helps, especially you guys know me. I lose framelits, so I'm likely to lose stamps too. Especially these tiny little ones. They get stuck to the bottom of a basket. You'll never see them again. So I stamped the top of the muffin in crumb cake also. And then we're gonna stamp, let me use a smaller block for that, the little, um, oops, wrong color, the cupcake or the muffin paper, the wrapper. Let's see if I can line that up. All right, and the, the baguette. 
let's stamp the baguette in. We're gonna do that in crumb cake also. So really, I think I'm only using five colors all together. There we go. All right, we've got the cherries, the muffin, the water bottle, the cheese, the bread, the basket, the handles. All we need now is the cute little, I don't know, tablecloth or napkin. And we're gonna do that in real red also. Now, of course, do these in whatever colors you have or whatever colors you like. I kind of stuck with basic colors, just your basic primary colors. All right, I think we're done stamping all the little cute little food. And let's see if we can get all these cut out. Get all the ink out of the way and grab the big shot. Now, I have told you guys before that sometimes on your magnetic platform, this is an accessory you can get for your big shot, the magnetic platform, which I use constantly. I rarely use anything else. I prefer the magnetic platform because it really does hold these framelits in place. However, it is a little tricky with a smaller framelits. Any of you who have used the magnetic platform, you know this. They jump around. The magnets, as I've been told, the magnets inside of the, the magnetic platform, they get kind of um, turned and twisted as the magnetic platform gets older. See, that one's not going to stay. Let's see if we move it a little bit. And so it causes I guess the, the metal of the smaller framelits to be less strong. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. All I know is that sometimes, like this one, watch, it's going to jump. And so if I wasn't cutting out so many, I would just move the paper so that I would find a place on the magnetic platform where it wouldn't jump. But since we have so many little pieces, I'm gonna take a little post-it note and hopefully it'll hold it in place because we're gonna try to get all of these cut out at one time, but I think my baguette is too close to my napkin. We may have to do those separately. I like the framelit set. It includes two of the little handles and that one's gonna jump around too. That one too, goodness. All right, I'm not seeing anything you guys are saying. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me early this morning. Yes, washi tape will do the same. Although, I've had washi tape rip the paper occasionally, so I am a little, little less confident when I use washi tape because then you have to start all over. So post-it notes are my go-to. All right, we're just gonna skip the baguette and come back through. All right, so do you see how I have all those stuck down? A couple needed the, the post-its because I can't really move the paper, otherwise we'd have to start all over. All right, let's push it back over here and see. Ah, there we go. Don't wanna get any stuck in there again like I did with my apron. And we'll pull all those off and put them right back down and then we'll cut our little baguette. I have a lot of you asking about the cards that I keep my framelits on, and I think that this is like a constant discussion in our little stamping community. How do you store your framelits? And I've done um, quite a different number of things over the years, um, and I've read lots of different options and discussions, um, Right now, what I'm using are these. They are from Stampin' Store, which is a very, very nice company that designs storage solutions for stampers of all different companies, not just Stampin' Up. Um, they are very pricey. And slowly over the years, I've added things in from there as I could afford it um, because you really do get what you pay, pay for. And because the price is high, the quality is very high as well. 
with that being said, oh, did I cut? Yeah, I got the cheese. With that being said, there are lots of other um, more affordable options. You, My favorite way to store my framelits that I did for a very long time was to use sheets of magnets. You can buy magnetic, whoops, magnetic sheets at the craft store or the office store that you run through your printer. And I would just put them on the wall and put all my framelits on there so that I could see everything that I had. But that got crowded and I ran out of space. And then I moved down into the office that I'm in now and it just, I didn't have the room for it. Um, my favorite holder, so what I'm gonna do as I'm talking to you guys, I'm gonna take some glue dots and glue all these pieces together. I'm gonna put the glue dots on the front of each of the objects so I can put them in behind the basket like that. Um, my, my favorite thing to hold framelits now really is um, magnetic knife strips that you can buy. I have bought them on Amazon and at Ikea. Magnetic knife strips um, that you mount to the wall. They are very strong um, and hold those framelits really much better than anything else that I've ever used. And, and they're not too strong that they'll bend it. They just will hold them and they're not gonna fall off onto the wall. I mean, onto the floor. Um, so that is that is probably my best suggestion um, is if you want to mount them on the wall to use those magnetic knife strips. Um, now I'm going to, that did not cut, that slipped a little bit in there, didn't it? So I'm gonna just trim that. Um, now if you have the space on your wall, that's what I would recommend doing, but I have just kind of run out of space where I'm at and so I have put them on these cards in little baskets. And it works well. Um, you know, there's lots of options, lots and lots of options out there, but I know I get lots of, every week I have somebody ask me where these are from. So stamp and storage, that's where I got those. All right, our basket is put together. Let's finish up this card. We're gonna use the sentiment that says, every day is a picnic with you, which is right here. And let's see which block I'm gonna put that on this one. And I'm gonna stamp it at the very top of this large stitched Whisper White circle. Because I have to put it at the very top or the basket will cover it up. And let's get our dimensionals and put that on there. So now that the basket's complete, you can see all the little options you could make. I mean, it's just so cute. It just reminds me of, I don't know, it reminds me of Barbie food. I think it's cute. All right, I did, let's see, I'm gonna have to make my little wine bottle lean over a little bit more. Hmm, he needs to lean over quite a bit, doesn't he? There we go, we'll go with that. All right. So now for the rest of the card, I'm actually, I keep hitting that, I'm sorry you guys. I'm actually going to use, this is called the Petal, why can't I remember? Petal Pear Embossing Folder. And it's one of your options that you get for free now for celebration. It is in the Occasions Catalog. And it's kind of overlooked. There's two of them. We're gonna use a second one on our third project today. When you emboss, you have to take out your magnetic platform and use your regular, your regular Big Shot platform. And I'm just going to use a piece of old olive. The measurements are there on the project sheet. I wanna say it was two and a half by four and a fourth. And there we have it. That just kind of made me think of, think of a meadow where you might have your picnic. Added that in. All right, let's put this on here. I'm using Fast Fuse, my favorite adhesive. And then I'm gonna take this old olive. This um, ribbon is called the Mini Chevron Ribbon and it's very lightweight and I really like it because it doesn't bulk your card up too heavily. Now, if you put a bow on your card like this, you do have to add extra postage. I always just go ahead and buy all the, all my stamps are those um, non-machinable, I think they're 72 cents, 74 cents, because me and the post office have a 
not a very nice relationship and I know that they're just gonna send everything back if I don't put that on there so I just go ahead and put it on everything these days all right so we did some old olive ribbon I'm gonna put two dimensionals here the vent sheets, Jamie. Yes, that's another. I have never been able to find the vent sheets. I haven't looked in a long time, but years ago when I looked for them, I couldn't find them. And so I just went with a magnetic, um, magnetic, um, you know, the sheets of magnetic paper that you get. Usually I get them at like the craft store. Um, but the vent covers I've heard are great. All right, there you have it, you guys. Super cute card. I love it. I love this set. It's so cute. All right. I hope you guys like that project. Let's go ahead and do the next one. Now the next one, whoop, there I did it again. That cord is in the way today. Now the next card, I decided to incorporate some paper in here. I don't know if you guys have noticed in the um, annual catalog with each designer series paper set, they have sets of cardstock that coordinate with that designer series paper. And it's our regular cardstock, it's just put together in kind of a combination pack to match the designer series paper. And it's great for those of you who don't wanna buy a giant pack of 24 of one color. So I love, these are three of my favorite colors, Emerald Envy, Flirty Flamingo, and Creme Cake. So um, when I saw this on here, I decided to make a card using those three colors. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, so if you wanted to make, if you like this color scheme, that would be a great option for you to get um, as your free item. Now these, these items that are new to the celebration listing are, still available to purchase. You can purchase them. Um, they have different item numbers if you want them for free. But if you're online ordering, it'll just pop up as one of your options. All right, I've done a little bit of work ahead of time here because this requires a lot of that framelit, those framelits. And so I've done a little bit of work ahead of time. All right, so this time we're gonna cut the basket out. We're not gonna stamp the basket. We're gonna cut the, the basket. Let me get my inks, Flirty Flamingo and Emerald Envy. And I'm so confused this week because my stamps are not out on the blocks. We're gonna use the leaves. And let me get a smaller block. These two little flowers. The, the UPS man just came through the cul-de-sac but he did not stop. My dogs are getting very nervous. They're like, We're, we know you're coming, we know. All right, let's stamp those leaves in Emerald Envy. And then I'm using Flirty Flamingo cardstock um, to stamp the leaves. I like when, I, when you stamp color on color. So Flirty Flamingo ink on Flirty Flamingo cardstock. Now when you make this card, you're gonna need three of each. But see, I've already done some. That way we won't be here, you won't be here watching me cut things on a big shot all day long because I'm not gonna lie these little flowers they take some patience you'll probably see that in just a second my little space my little workspace is getting smaller and smaller I need to I need to clean up all right let's put the magnetic platform back in and grab these two pieces oops I put the clear plate down first Grab these two pieces and this one lines up beautifully, nice and easy. And now let's let you're gonna watch me fight with this guy. This one actually probably will do pretty well. Nope, see how it jumped? So move your paper. There we go. Sometimes when they're this tiny, I will switch over to my my regular platform because the tiny ones just are very tricky but they're so worth it because who wants to fussy cut something that small we're just gonna we're gonna beat him at his own game by using a post-it note hopefully I'm talking smack to a framelit okay now stay there buddy and you stay right there now you're gonna need a framelit too now that I was talking smack to your your little friend okay Come on, post-its, do your job. <laughs> it's too early in the morning to fight with framelits. But I think we did it. Let's see, did it work? Yes. 
All right, we've got one there. And, oh, and I forgot to cut the basket. We'll have to bring the big shot back over. One tiny little flower there and one less tiny flower there. Now, these are the framelits that I will lose, so I am putting them right back right now. All right, let's cut that basket. And like I told you, this basket this time, we are cutting it and embossing it at the same time using the crumb cake paper, which is in this workspace somewhere under all of my stuff. <laughs> there it is right there. Okay, so I got a piece of that crumb cake cardstock that is in that pack, and this is the framelit, the open shaped framelit. See, he's even jumping this morning. And this piece is an embossing piece. It's not gonna cut, but it's gonna add texture to our basket. So I'm gonna add it right there. And run it through. And let's look and see how cute it is. See that? It turned out so cute. I like that option. I like the stamped image too. I think they're both cute. I like to have choices. All right, let's put them together. Let's bring back all those pieces that I did. And this is another great job for glue dots. And because they're going on the back of the basket, I'm gonna put the glue dot on the front, which seems odd. So put that there and put that one there in the middle. And this one leaning over just Let's see, we want it a little bit different, like that. All right, now let's start with, oh look, I haven't lost any of them yet, yay. So the big ones I put on top with glue dots. Thank you, I'm glad you like the colors, Karen. I like these colors too. Flirty Flamingo is a gorgeous color. And by the way, speaking of these colors, these are retiring in colors that will be going away with the new catalog and they will sell out before the retired list probably even comes out so if you like flirty flamingo and emerald envy make sure you get your hands on them because everybody knows they're going they only last two years and they will be gone they will literally be gone okay so now we're going to cut a window in this card and so this is just a basic Emerald Envy card base, four and a fourth by 11, scored in the middle. And I'm gonna take this circle, this is one of our layering circles, and I'm just gonna center it and run it through to make a window like that. And then before I take the big shot out of here, I'm gonna make a frame for it. So let's do the circle first. These actually will fit together, but yesterday it didn't cut so well like that. So I'm gonna do it the right way today. Cut your circle. And you can save that circle for later. That's a good white circle to keep for a project. Then take the next size up scalloped circle, put it around, go back through. I do this quite a bit, making these cute little frames, and there you have a frame. All right, I think we're done with the big shot for now. All right, so we're gonna actually take our cute little um, basket of flowers. Well, I probably just need it too. And we're gonna put it right inside that window. Make sure that it's centered. That looks pretty good. All right, and now I'm gonna use, let's do the sentiment first. And the sentiment I used yesterday, I wasn't the sentiment I meant to use. I wanted to use a basket full of thanks for you. After I stamped it, I thought, oh, Darn it, that was the wrong sentiment. But it works still. This, the other one says, wishing you a day filled with good things. All right, a basket of thanks for you. Write an Emerald Envy on the bottom corner of that card. All right, now here comes the fun part. I'm gonna use the fine tip glue pen. 
you guys know that I am a very, look at it, it's already making a mess. I'm a very messy, fine tip. Well, no, not. I won't blame it on the fine tip glue because it's not the problem. I am the problem. I am very messy. See, it just made a giant bubble. Well, it's gonna be messy. I may. I am very messy with liquid glue. I'm putting these little dots around and not even squeezing. That's how tiny you want your dots. Um, another option would be glue dots. And another option would be the multi-purpose adhesive sheets. I love those things. But you have to remember to do it before you die cut. And that's always where I screw up, I forget. Because then you can just peel it off and it's like a sticker, which is fabulous. Um, the fine tip glue pen is a great option if you're a steady hand. All right, the last part is just a little, little uh, whisper white twine, Baker's twine bow. My hands are a mess. All that ink from the first project. And I am gonna use a glue dot here. It takes about five minutes for that liquid adhesive to, to dry, so I'm gonna be careful. But there we have it, all done. So cute. Now if you wanted to have space in here so that you could write, you could actually do a separate piece and adhere it under here. So those flowers would be in the window and then you would have a whole piece to write. But I kind of like it because then it doesn't, um, it means I don't have to write very much. <laughs> all right, project number two. All right, let's move that out of the way. Well, the boys are here to say hello. They, they haven't made an appearance this morning. Quite well they have, I guess, but they haven't made a barking appearance. I don't know, Emma. It's all right. My daughter is here to help. <laughs> and all the neighbors are here now. All right. So let's just give that a few minutes. She's standing on the front porch talking like that's going to make the dog stop. All right, the third project we are making is this cute silver gable box. Emma, please take the dogs. Thank you. These are our mini silver gable boxes. Sorry, you guys. I'm sure your dogs are now going crazy. Mini silver gable boxes. They are so cute. There's 12 in a box. And I've used them for all kinds of events. Uh, yeah, events, all kinds of different events. This one I thought would be really cute if you were having like a girls' night out, like a fun girlfriend event, or even a bachelorette party with a little wine glasses. So all I'm using from the stamp set is the stamp and the two little wine glasses. So let's do the tag first, and then I'm gonna show you how you can emboss on these cute silver gable boxes. All right, now here is that branch too. Remind me to tell you about that branch. I'll remember. Just distracted by the dogs and the kids and who thought doing a Facebook Live at the front of the house at 10 a.m. was a great idea. I did. We're gonna go see a movie today. We're gonna go see oh, Wrinkle in Time. We all read the book. And so now we're gonna go see the movie. Hopefully it's good. I'm sure it will be. All right. Actually, I just did this. We're going to do this in opposite colors. So I'm going to stamp this in Fresh Fig. Fresh Fig and Berry Burst are the colors I'm using. And they are in colors too, but they are not retiring. They um, will be around for one more year. Our in colors stay for two years. Let's see. We have one wine glass stamp. They stay for two years. And th these will be around for... Um, another year, which is good. I like these two colors. All right, so we're gonna stamp these. I'm gonna try to stamp them apart that way. Hopefully my framelits will fit. And I'm just gonna take this, this weird little stamp is actually like the wine in the wine glasses. And I'm gonna stamp that right in there. A little red wine. Well, I can't get it in the right place. But there we go. All right. So now 
I know this set is so cute Julie I love it too and I'm glad you guys had asked me to use it because I've had it it was one of the first things I ordered and I really just had not done it and and um, I just kept getting lots of requests I love when you guys tell me what you're what you've been looking what you've been looking at and wanting me to use because I always like to have an assignment. It's harder for me to think of things to do when I have hundreds of products just staring at me. And I know I've had lots of requests for, there's a set that's similar to this in the annual catalog, the bouquet set. I can't remember the name, but it's kind of similar. It, um, lots of flowers and stems and you could build bouquets and stuff. So that's on my list too. Okay, there we go. Ooh, look, they stay. Let's see, will they stay all the way? All right, the the framelit, um, the oval is the, one of the stitched ovals. The second smallest. And let's pop out those little wine glasses. I like that they included two wine glass framelits because they knew that we would probably be cutting out more than one. These guys are perfect for our mini dimensionals. The little mini dimensionals fit perfectly right on the back of those cups. I'm wondering how many of you have kids that are on spring break this week. It's been a nice week. We've had cool weather here, which is good for us. Cool, you know, in the 60s, <laughs> which is cool for us. All right, now, did I lose my branch? No, here it is. This branch, I was telling you, I included this branch without even realizing that it, too, is on here. The Petals and More Thinlets, it's free with a $100 purchase, which is a really good deal because these uh, framelits are not cheap because there are so many. Now, I'm just going to take that and just kind of adhere it like that. Kind of swagging underneath and I am going to cut those off. All right so we've got the tag ready. Let's emboss this um, this silver gable box. I thought I pulled one out. I guess not. Here's the other Petals and More um, embossing folder that I used at the beginning. In the first project I used the other one. There's two in the pack. I think they're nine dollars normally and you can still just purchase them or you can get them free with a $50 purchase. So the, one of the reasons I really liked these was because they fit perfectly right here on the gable box. That way you're just embossing that center piece and it just embosses like a regular piece of paper. You're just gonna put it through your Big Shot using your regular platform. Now you could use um, a regular embossing folder, but that would emboss the whole thing, which is fine. But I like, I liked, I really liked, I thought it was kind of cool how just got the center. So you can decide which side you like. Do you like the, the raised side or the, the, well, see different pieces are raised on each. This is the outline is raised and this side, the in, inside of the flowers are raised. I don't know, I like them both. All right, so these boxes are a great size. Not too big, but big enough to put some goodies in. And we are going to, let me see, I always have to think, put this one in first, and then the sides, and then that one. All right, and let's just fold all of these out. Oops. And then fold these in. Close it up. I mean, wouldn't that be so cute to send some friends home with at a party? party favor. We're going to a 40th birthday party in a couple of weeks. That would be cute for that party. All right, now I'm taking the Fresh Fig um, woven ribbon and the Berry Burst metallic edge ribbon and I'm putting them together. I'm sandwiching them together like this and I'm going to just run it through this little hole here. So I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to tie it just like that. So they're together. 
And I'm gonna try to make my loop so that the metallic ribbon stays on the outside. You might have to do some finagling and some twisting of the ribbon, a little manipulating. Hmm. I think that one's just gonna have to be like that. Well, let's try that again. All right, ribbon, stay on the outside. There we go. When this one comes through, twist it so that the pink is the berry burst is on the outside. There we go. All right. Cut those off at an angle, just like that. I'm gonna slide it up. Now that doesn't prevent the box from opening. See how the, these still open on the sides? It's just around that middle. You probably would have to, if you wanna open it completely, you would have to unwrap that ribbon. But if you guys just wanted to take a sneak peek, they wouldn't have to. All right, two dimensionals on either side. And I'm going to put that on either side of that bow like that. And there it is. Super cute. Super cute. I just love that embossing folder on that silver. Very nice. All right, you guys, we made it. We survived the dogs and the neighbors and all the chaos that happens during Facebook Live. We survived. Where's my other card? Here it is. And hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you got some ideas. Yay, thank you so much for the hearts. All right, let me look. Did your Cordy pop up, Mariah? Yes, <laughs> out of his bed, I'm sorry. I know, my dogs, my friend, Amory, I'm sure she's on here. She said I should make an intro to my Facebook Lives that says starring and then has me and the dogs and the UPS man because they all seem to pop up during my Facebook Lives. I thought that was very funny. Amory, so cute. All right, so I'm going to look through here, and um, if I see any questions, yes, yeah, salmonsorage.com is where I get the little cards for um, my um, framelits. And you know what? Let me measure because I get that question, too. They come in various sizes. I think mine are, what is that? It's not even even measurement. Six and three-fourths by... Six, so maybe it's six by seven. That's what they call it, six by seven. Um, and I think that's a pretty good size. They hold the bigger ones too, like the popcorn framelit, or the popcorn box. Um, and then Jamie mentioned the vent sheets. You can get those at the hardware store. Um, the vent, they cover the vents. Um, they're, they're magnetic. Um, and she puts on a binder. That's a great, great idea. They're flexible, so you put them in a binder. Excellent idea, Jamie. Um, all right. Well, my angry bunny doing Karen. She's very angry. I really have been doing some research about the bunny, and I think she does need a husband, as my daughter calls it. She needs a husband. But it's very tricky. You have to have a an adult it has to be a male so they don't fight to the death. It's just ridiculous. I'm just telling you guys, do not get a rabbit. Um, Gidget, sorry, Gidget. <laughs> um, Kathy, lemon lime twist. Yes, I know. You know, every few years, Stamping Up does do a color refresh is what they call it. Um, and they do bring in colors back. Um, and introduce new colors into the main colors. So you never know, Lemon Lime Twist could come back as a permanent color. Um, the ones that we love usually do somehow make their way back. So all these stamps be forced into the new catalog next year after the, we don't know if these, if, I have no idea if these stamps will carry over. Um, Julie, that's a good question. We just don't know. We'll find all that out in April, what's carrying over and what's retiring. Um, I, I wish I had a, wish I had a, what is that called? a glass ball fortune teller. I wish I knew. I wish I could see into the future because believe me, it kills me as we get closer. I have to know what's carrying over and what's retiring. But as soon as I know, I will share that information. All right, you guys, don't forget, put your orders in by Monday night and use this hostess code and I will send you all three make and takes, including the gable box. Um, and if you bump it to 50, you get a celebration item and the all-star tutorial bundle. And don't forget to share for a prize and go over to my blog and enter for a prize. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys next Friday at the regular time.
Bye, guys.